All right, it's five o'clock. We can get um, Vice Mayor Dalton still muted. There we go. All right, I think we've got everybody. Commissioner Lecomte, Janot, Vice Mayor Dalton, Commissioner Phillips. All right, let's go ahead and get started then if it's five, if everybody's ready. Okay. All right, um, so our first item on our work session agenda today is the appointment of Karen Ziv to the BZA. Is Karen Ziv with us yet? She is, she's here. Um, well, nice to meet you, Karen. Miss Hello, sorry for the road noise. Um, I'm working out of a Starbucks today. So. <laughs> oh, I miss those days. Um, well, thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to, to meet you. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here, Karen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I can, uh, uh, Ms. Ziv is the only one who has submitted an application so far <laughs> for the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, and I uh, had a Zoom call with her a few weeks ago, and we just talked about why she wanted to be involved. and. Uh, she's lived in Red Bank uh, just over a year and uh, just wants to be more involved and engaged in the town's governance. And I can, uh, I, I can maybe let her introduce herself a little more to you guys now, if that would be better. And then I can introduce her at the regular meeting or whichever would be better for everyone. <laughs> if anyone has any feelings about it. Either and I'll me. <laughs> Okay, um, she uh, 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 she is currently working for a nonprofit um, out of California. She volunteers with the St. Catharines Women's Shelter um, and has worked uh, in it with an, in another nonprofit capacity and is currently studying to become an accountant. So I think she uh, would really give really a good perspective of like cost benefit analysis of um, zo uh, upholding zoning rules and also um, also understanding, as she said in her application, that variances sometimes benefit uh, neighborhoods. So um, I think she just will bring a really good uh, perspective to the Board of Zoning Appeals, which hasn't met in over two years. And she <laughs> understands that, but uh, feels uh, uh, passionate about being more engaged and involved. So I, I'm very happy to recommend her. So if anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead. I was just wondering, um, Ms. Ziv, what, uh, what makes you, I mean, I think Vice Mayor Dalton addressed some of these things, what, make, what makes you interested in, in working with the city government? I think you, you know it's a, it's a rare bird <laughs> who, who wants to volunteer for a, a job like this. So I'd just love to hear it a little bit from your perspective. What, what made you, what inspired you to apply? Um, so actually, um, I've been wanting to be more involved since I moved to Chattanooga from Florida um, about a year and a half ago um, and then I settled in Red Bank itself and I realized it's its own town um, and I thought Chattanooga is a little much um, but Red Bank has a feel of an actual neighborhood even I mean even with its own little mini neighborhoods within the city um, and it's something um, as Stephanie said where I can be more involved like I said I work at a nonprofit. I volunteer a couple places. I just feel that I've been very fortunate in life, and I'd like to be able to be of service to others um, on many levels. And this this is one way. Um, and I know that the Board of Zoning Appeals doesn't um, have a huge demand. I mean, I work full time and I go to school part time. So I think it's a great way to learn a little bit more about how a city is run, so that I can be of use um, in a bigger way later on when I have more free time. Anybody else have any questions for Ms. Ziv? Oh. You ever spend any time on any boards or anything, Karen? 
Um, back in Florida, I was the vice president of a um, small uh, triathlon. Uh, it's a sports uh, club. Um, and <clears throat> excuse me, it was a 501c4, not c3. Um, and as the vice president, I was responsible. Unfortunately, the financials were a big mess. So I was responsible for helping get them in order with our new treasurer, uh, making sure that we had budgets, um, helping craft a vision of where we wanted the club to go forward. Uh, this was a club, it, it was pretty small. It was only about 200 members, um, but we were definitely engaged in the community, worked with, um, we had, um, we held a race, uh, for people who lived in the city. Um, and so there was a lot of outreach with the police, the fire department, the, YM, the local YMCA to try to get people involved and to, um, again, just, just bring something to the community. So that was a lot of what I did. And um, being a technical person, I'm a web developer for a living. Um, I was able to also help us um, work with our social media presence and everything to uh craft our craft our message crap uh and share the vision and again i'm sorry about the the road noise um uh the internet at the at the house i'm staying at is very bad so um so it, it definitely gave me a taste for being part of a bigger thing than just um just my job or just going to school excellent do we have any more questions for Ms. Ziv before the uh, regular meeting. All right, if there are no more questions, we can move on to the next item on our agenda, which is uh, Citizen Wade Cook would like to make a presentation to the board about uh, pickleball courts. Uh, Mr. Cook, are you with us? No, do we not have Mr. Cook? He is here, he's unmuted Hello. now. Oh, okay. Okay, I think uh, I'm kind of new at the Zoom, so. <laughs> there there he is. Oh, I love your background. <laughs> it's, so, it's so cold, the people are frozen. <laughs> okay, I, I'm not gonna take a lot of your time. Uh, I'm just gonna present a little proposal to you. And before I do that, I wanna say thanks to uh, the City of Red Bank, uh, Tim Thornberry and Public Works, and especially, uh, Greg Tate, in the previous uh, two years when I've called him about pot, uh, lights being out, uh, Red Bank, I called him one Friday, and Monday morning we were out there playing, and a bucket truck showed up. They were out there fixing the lights. I asked him about relining the current courts, and uh, within a week or two, the you know new lines were the ones worn out. They were uh, repainted, and just a great job all around. So before we even get started with that, I just had to put a shout out for the uh, public works and the great job they do. But uh, what I wanted to just propose and suggest actually is just taking one of the tennis courts. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you saw the proposal I sent and there's the three courts that are together and then the two separate ones at 90 degrees angle. I'd like to suggest taking one of those courts, which measures about 50 by 120, and that's Tracy flipping the pages for me. That's exactly right. And uh, placing three pickleball courts within that uh, one court. You can actually fit four if, if, if you wanted to do four. And the more the merrier, just puts less space between each court. Uh, let's see. And if, let me, I'm just going to go through a few. Pickleball is played with a little paddle and a ball it's like a wiffle ball and it's it's pretty uh it's pretty much a like ping pong and tennis put together uh it's played by a variety of age groups there's young people that play we've played with utc students who came out and play and we play with folks all the way up to uh i know one's 81 years old and they're good the, the, the game, it's not all about power. There's a lot of strategy involved. There's men that play, there's women that play, and primarily it's played as a doubles game. So uh, you'll typically see four people on a court. And uh, presently there's a good group of people that play there. In fact, through even through this entire winter, 
on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings around eight or nine to 10 o'clock, you'll usually see a group of players out there playing. Uh, I think it was about a week ago on Wednesday, there was nine, 10 players playing. So it, it's just a, a, it's a sport that's really increasing in popularity with the number of courts and municipalities putting in these uh, pickleball courts. Uh, there's been some, there's uh, courts in Dalton, there's courts in Collegedale, there's courts in Cleveland, and these are all dedicated pickleball courts. What we have there is fine. I mean, you can play with those and it's better than nothing, but the, the net between tennis and pickleball is a different height. The ones we have up there, you really can't adjust them. So we have one gentleman who has a hook and he'll adjust them for pickleball, but I'm sure when the tennis players show up, they don't adjust it back up for tennis. So there, there are, are some differences. And presently when we play, if, if a ball goes past you, which it typically does, it, it's probably a good 20 feet, uh, maybe even more to get to the fence line to retrieve your ball. So what I'm just proposing is for us to look to take just one of those five tennis courts and put three pickleball courts, maybe even four in there, uh, just to help the utilization factor. Because presently in the spring, on a nice spring day or some, some days you'll see we're all five courts are uh, with tennis players, but typically it's not. And if the pickleball crowd keeps showing up and they take up three of the pickleball, you know, three of the tennis courts, that's just going to leave two tennis courts for uh, other folks to play tennis. Uh, there, there has been one time this past summer where uh, – my wife, Lucretia, and I did show up to play pickleball just to practice, and we did grab one of those three courts, and they were having a tennis tournament. But the tennis tournament, I, I don't know where they were from. They were definitely younger folks. They, they definitely uh, worked with us. They didn't kick us off the one court, so they were happy playing with four tennis courts. So, uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if the high schools use that or not. I, I haven't noticed them, you know. So, uh, Tracy, maybe we could uh, turn to the next page. And that's just showing there's a little graph there at the, at the top left. It's showing you the uh, total courts. And this is uh, from the U.S. APA, which is the United States actually has a pickleball association. And it's just a graph of the courts. From 2014, there were 9,300 uh, courts for pickleball and by 2017 there was 21,000. So if you just look at the court at that blue graph it'll show you the trajectory of how many of these courts are going in and and the overall enthusiasm for it. Uh, as a USAPA points out too it's one of the country's fastest growing sports. I mean there's a pro tour, there's people in uh in, typically in Florida, there's you know, 80 court places where people go to play. And uh, th there's a good group here, here in town. Uh, the bottom picture shows you back in October, there was three courts of local players at Red Bank Park, which was uh, 12 people. And there was probably uh, two or three of us still waiting to go out on a court. So it's, it's, it's pretty popular. And it, it, it's a really healthy activity get you out, you're running, you know, it, it, you typically play for an hour or two and it's, it's a social activity where if you ever see these people playing, they're having a lot of fun. There's a lot of jokes going on. It's not too uh, dog eat dog out there, although it can be at times. And there's some very good players here in red back. I will tell you that. <laughs> so uh, Tracy, maybe we can just go to the next, uh, and this is just a, uh, something I came up with, and I know it's not totally correct, but it will just give you an idea of the cost savings the city could uh, experience by just going with a transition from one tennis court to pickleball courts. Typically, a new pickleball court, standalone by itself, costs on average twenty-five to $30,000 uh, to construct one court. 
So if you extrapolate, extrapolate that out, three courts, maybe 75, probably more than that 85,000 on the conversion. And this was just ballparking it based on the equipment I found online, the paint, blah, blah, all that kind of stuff. And a total guess at labor, you're looking at maybe three converted courts of about $8,500. Now, I, I do know uh, uh, there's a fellow pickleball player, uh, Diane and Mike Pendergrass, who play on those courts. And Mike has a friend who works in the field where they actually uh, put in competition athletic services, uh, uh, play, playing fields. And I, I think he talked to the gentleman and he said his best guess was probably about fifteen to $20,000 to convert the one court to uh, – three or four pickleball courts. So uh, uh, mine was just a pie in the sky number. It's probably about twice that, but overall you're still looking at a, a cost savings of uh, a huge cost savings, as opposed to taking land someplace and saying, uh, we want to put in three or four new pickleball courts. Uh, College Dale did put in four pickleball courts uh, five, six, seven years ago, and they're very nice. If you ever go there at the back behind the city hall, they're in the spring, summer, fall, they're constantly in use. It, there's a good crowd that plays there too. And like I said, other municipalities are putting them in. Cleveland opened up a park, Dalton's opened up a park, and Chattanooga proper does not have a outside pickleball court with, with more than one court. I know one, one or two courts where you can go play and they're, they're also tennis pickleball courts. So I just think it would be a great idea if uh, Red Bank would pursue this and uh, take a stab at making that change. I think it would draw a lot of people here and it could also bring people who spend a little money. They may go over to bread and butter. They may go be caffeinated and grab some coffee it's, uh, it, it's not going to hurt the, a red bank. Let's put it that way. So I just like to thank you for giving me this time and take this into consideration and, uh, hopefully we can get it done. So much, Mr. Cook. Um, do any of the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Cook about this proposal? I can ask a few questions. <laughs> of course I've got questions. <laughs> um, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, you know, our, our jobs as commissioners is to, is to make the life better, better for all of the citizens of Red Bank. Um, uh, and how, how, how do you propose, is there any funding there for this? Is there any private funding at all that along with this? Or is this all for... Are, are you asking me that, Pete? Yes, but yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait. I, I mean, I, no, apologize. I, I don't see you know any private funding. We can put a tournament on once it's done and, and gather up some money that way. But uh, I, I, I know uh, College Dale had Mr. Key write the check for their courts. You know, I, I don't think Red Bank probably has a Mr. McKee in the area who's ready to do that, but. For, for the amount of money that, that it would take to just convert one court versus build building, you know, an entire new facility. I, I, I'd like to see what the budget is for the red bank, you know, parks and rec, if, if something can't come out of there to uh, help do it. I, it it's an underutilized facility right now. Well, I'm, I'm not going to argue that. I'm not, and I'm not, a, uh, I'm not going to argue that, but you know, of course it's kind of one of those things that, I'd like I'd like to see some skin in the game too. It's all I'm kind of getting at, you know. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think you just have to look at it as it's an investment into future returns. Because I think if you would build it and you start attracting some more folks, then you're gonna uh, you're gonna draw more people to Red Bank. It, it's another plus for Red Bank versus sitting back and letting other communities, you know, do these things, and then you're a follower. I, I, I think Red Bank should, uh, it would just be good for Red Bank. I'd like to redirect that question to Mr. Thornbury. Um, do we have uh, the funding that would be required in the current parks budget for this project this year, or would this need to be part of the discussion for next year's budget? 
it would have to be part of the next year's discuss discussion for the budget. Um, we didn't have that kind of money in this year's budget for the kids corner park. So uh, definitely we have looked at, got a, got a couple of quotes. And as Mr. Cook talked about, they're ranging from 15 to $18,000 for three courts. So uh, definitely we would have to put out um, RFPs or Qs on it and get pricing. And then you guys would have to approve that expense because it's over 10 grand. So. And, and, and Mr. Cook, so we'd have to move the nets and then repaint. Is that basically what you're saying? Yeah, basically re repaint the, you know, the, the one section of courts. Okay. And, and it really take up the tennis net and poles you have there, purchase new poles and nets and, and, uh, and repaint. Okay. All right. Well, I, I want you also to know I'm not against it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to look at it, if that makes sense. Sure. If we could, if we could develop a, any kind of public private partnership or find a sponsor to assist with the pro project, that would be great. Yeah. Um, I definitely see it as being within the realm of, you know, what the city can, can do. Well, and I'm also looking for a uh, positive press too. If we can do something for positive press, I like the 8,000 a lot more than 18, of course, but <laughs> you know, um, um, uh, yeah, it's pretty expensive press, uh, but um, you know, um, Tim, if this is going to have to be part of the future budget discussions, um, I wonder if there might be any grant opportunities that would assist in the funding for a project like this. Yeah, I mean, I can look into it for some recreational grants uh, in, in that aspect. So okay. to see if we can get some funding to help out on it. I know we didn't get it last year, but I know you applied for the BCBS Healthy Places grant. Um, right. Something along those lines. Um, or be, I mean might be possible to reach out to BCBS because they have a lot of health and fitness initiatives. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm always looking for grants to help us out on different things. So Great. We can add that to our to our project list. You know, I, I'll check, you know, maybe there's other uh, places to dig up some money. You never know. <laughs> you know maybe the uh, Pickleball Association puts out money. Who knows? But uh, like I said, there's some other folks, you know, here in town that are involved and they, they may have some ideas. So in the meantime, time, I'll, I'll look for that. And see okay. if anything. Well, and, and, you know, I have seen a, a lot more activity over at the tennis courts, but I don't know if they're pickleballers or tennis quarters, you know, so, uh, you know, so it might very well be your, your, uh, uh, your associations that's out there giving it, uh, uh, the, 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 the use, cause I like seeing that stuff used, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. I was just there last week and I saw a two, uh, sets of people playing pickleball while I was at the kids corner park with my son. So it was the first time I had seen it, but, <laughs> um, it looked fun. And like he said, everybody was really socializing and having a good time together. Yeah, yeah, it's a good sport. It, it really is. And it, like I said, it's increasing in popularity, you know, every, every year so i mean we're thankful for what we have it, it's just uh I, I think if you did this you'd find a lot more people you know visiting the area i think you'd get you'd be drawing people out of chattanooga proper to come up to red bank to play mm -hmm. i have one more question for you mr Cook. you mentioned that the court can accommodate four pickleball courts mm -hmm. um but you propose three is there any reason that you have a preference for three over four no but I, i'd say well I, I did that for just cost saving i'd say you go for four <laughs> <laughs> okay i think if you would go through the trouble of restriping it it would be you know worthwhile to try to maximize the outcome and then we could you know increase our total number of courts overall by by three right it's like a 50 percent increase so no, no, I, I, four, four sounds good. <laughs> All right. Any further questions for Mr. Cook? Good. Good. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. Yeah, thank yeah, you, Mr. Cook. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So next on the work session agenda, we have the resolution, upcoming resolution for a vote uh, for the, regarding the invocation. Um, do we have any discussion or comments on that?
like it. <clears throat> I think okay. it looks good. Great. Any other comments on that item before we move on? Well, uh, you know, that they, it was just, um, uh, I, I, I like it to where we have our clergy is involved in our uh, uh, meetings, if they, uh, 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 and, and for the invocation, and I, I, I'm, I'm totally good with it. Okay. <laughs> I, I like it. Um, Arnie or Tim, whoever saw fit to do that, uh, put in that we could also have our chaplain from our police department and fire department available to uh, the Yeah, meeting. that is a nice touch. I've, I've heard of other cities that have their uh, fire chaplain um, lead the prayer from time to time. So that's yes. a good move. <laughs> All right. Well, if there are no further comments on that item, um, do we have any other business items not on the agenda that anybody wants to discuss? Um, I, I do. Uh, I just, I wanted to uh, bring up the fact that I had asked him, uh, the city manager a few weeks ago to put discussion of a formal RFP procedure on an upcoming agenda. And I included like a rough draft, multi-step approach that would allow for things like multiple community feedback opportunities, formal presentations by the developers, review and recommendation by the planning commission, et cetera. Um, and I'm still waiting on a status update on a rough draft from the city attorney. So I just wanted to check in with Mr. Stoltz and see when he would have a draft for us to uh, review and discuss. I'll, I'll share with you that I have not done it yet and I will redouble my efforts to do so. Okay. And uh, when would be a prediction, but shall we say before the next meeting? Excellent. Okay. Thank you very much. You. I apologize for not having gotten to it yet. Quite all right. I, I felt like it was appropriate to, to have something, a discussion at least about getting a, something like that in place, uh, especially with the impending uh, RFP on the old middle school property. So thank you for doing that. Uh, I've, got a, I've got a question and maybe I'm, I'm just missing the boat right here. On the uh, survey that we did for the recycling, how did that all turn out? Uh, that survey is still live. Okay. Um, and I think uh, Mr. Thornberry and I discussed leaving it open maybe until the budget discussions begin in April and closing it then just to allow for the maximum opportunity for citizens to uh, complete the survey and give that feedback um, so we can have as complete a picture as possible. Uh, we have received over 500, closer to 600 responses already. So um, that's going quite well so far. Okay. Um, so I we, don't know, we don't have any results of where we're at right now? Um, well, the preliminary, I mean, the results are still pending as long as we leave it open, but the preliminary results show a 90% uh, five out of five support rating for the policy in general and an 89.3% support rate for the price of $3 a month per household. So the results are coming in pretty favorable um, in favor of curbside recycling. All right, I did have a, a, another item I wanted to bring up not on the agenda. Um, our- I have something, not everybody gets a lot of people don't do Facebook. Is there any way that we can advertise that so people can take advantage of the, um, you know, the survey that, that happened? It's on the website. Yeah, it's on the city yeah, website. Still, and we always mention it in the meetings. Um, I'm open to suggestions if there's another way you'd like to publicize it. Maybe, maybe community news, maybe an article in uh, Chattanooga.com, um, post everybody reads one or the other of those. So I, I'd like to get a little more, I'm for it, don't get me wrong, but I'd like to get a little more input from, from more citizens. I mean, you know, we've got several thousand and 500 is only the number that we've got. But I'd, like to, I'd like to get it out there and even if we had to do a billboard, I mean, something that we can get it out there instead of just on our website, Facebook. Okay. What do you think about that, Tim? 
I can look at other options. Okay. All right. Um, so okay. our executive order from the Tennessee state governor that allows us to conduct these meetings virtually expires at the end of February, um, unless it's extended. And as far as I know, it has not been extended up until the state, of course, you can do it anytime. But for the time being, we have to plan on returning to in-person meetings starting in March. And that'd be our next meeting. We'll have to be back to in-person. So I wanted to run by each of you and find out um, who all has a portable device like a laptop or a tablet or even a smartphone who could bring it with them to the in-person meeting in order to set it up in front of them and we'd be able to broadcast on Zoom, simulcast on Zoom. Um, but while we're meeting in person, uh, people can attend virtually if they don't yet feel comfortable uh, coming in person because of COVID or if their schedules uh, or lifestyle prohibits. Yeah, I have a laptop. Okay, I have a laptop as well. Arnie, um, do you have a laptop? A, a tablet and a, and, a Zoom and a smartphone. Okay. Um, Commissioner LeCompte, do you have a portable device? I think we all do. I do. Uh, yes, I've got a laptop that I'm on right now. Oh, you do. Great. And Commissioner Janot, what about you? I think we might have lost Miss Janot. Looks like she's frozen up. Yeah. I have, I have a, a, a battery power to back this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'll be, I'll be good. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, Commissioner Janot, we you froze up right when you were about to answer. Do you have a portable device? Okay. I do. I have a, a computer and a cell phone. Um, how long are you proposing to do this, Holly? Um, I would say until, until the vaccine reaches the critical point that we are no longer requiring social distancing and mask wearing. Um, that would be a, a prudent time to continue giving our citizens the option to attend virtually for their own safety, um, even if we're not allowed to. <laughs> um, it may, that would probably be later. It would probably be most of this year. Um, I'm sorry, Commissioner Janot, you're, you're freezing up again. <laughs> We can, we, can, uh, we can do it temporarily. I'm okay with that. Okay. Well, if that's the case, then if everyone would be all right with continuing with uh, bringing their device with them to the next in-person meeting in March, it would be greatly appreciated. Very good. Excellent. Sounds good. Okay. Um, um, yeah, one question. Will we be back at City Hall or will we be back at um, the Community Center? We'll be, we'll be at City Hall. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no internet service at the community center. Exactly. Yeah, the, the, the community center is not set up with Wi Fi or inter internet access, which we'll have to have to do this Zoom. So we'll have to go back to um, the commission chambers until we can get that installed. And we're looking at that in the upcoming budget year. Okay. All right. Any other business not on the agenda before we adjourn? Okay, well, if that is everything for now, then um, we can take a break and I will see everyone back at six. All right. All right. See you then. Thank you. Bye.